In a previous lesson, we had created the Contosa1.xlsx workbook by just uh, setting up a basic spreadsheet and using the Power Pivot add-in to read in about 3.4 million uh, fact rows plus some related uh, dimensions. With that workbook, we could continue on and querying it using it in a single user mode. The next thing we did with it was we wanted to share it with others, so we published it to SharePoint. The next thing we're going to do is take that same workbook and bring that into a more sophisticated professional analysis services development environment. And the, the first question would be, why would we want to do that? And, and the reason we would is because it's, it's, it's much more scalable. We can use even more memory, even more features. We can use partitioning and um, security roles. And there's just a lot of things we can do once we move that into a database server environment. So that's what we'll do next. The nice thing about this process is it's really, really easy. So if you can imagine, you might have power users out there that are creating their own Power Pivot for Excel workbooks, and, and they're, re they're doing all the research, all the analysis, they're modeling calculations, and they're, they're getting a lot of our traditional database work done for us. And, and then we can take what they've done right from that point and bring it into a large-scale solution, which is something we haven't been able to do before. So let's look at how easy that is to do. So I'm running my uh, SQL Server data tools in the Visual Studio 2010 environment, and what I'm going to do is create a new analysis services project. And I have a project type import from Power Pivot. I have to give it a name. I'm going to give it the same name I've been using. So Contosa 1. And these default folders are fine. I'll click OK. So what it's going to do is ask me to point out and pick the spreadsheet that I started with. And it's going to read it. So I'll choose Contosa 1 and open. And from there, the project wizard really is going to do virtually everything for me. So all I have to do is wait. I can see some status down here about pre preparing content, opening the uh, BI model file, um, and then the last thing it will do is actually read in the data from the uh, the workbook into my model. So it's done that, and if I look through this, if you watch the lesson on using Power Pivot for Excel, this looks really familiar. It's kind of a blue casted color rather than green. Um, but, uh, you know, basically it looks about the same. So we still have our tabular view. We still, if we click on this diagram button, um, we can see the ER diagram look of it. Um, but, uh, you know, other than some of the navigational items, items being moved around, um, you know, we don't have a ribbon. We have more things on menus. But really, most of the features that we saw before are here. Um, there are some new things here that we'll go over in future lessons, like roles and perspectives. Um, and, uh, and and other things. Uh, so so there are more things we can do in this Visual Studio environment to enhance and extend the solution. But but you can kind of see, and the point I'm trying to make is that the experience of modeling data and bringing it in and uh, using uh, BI semantic models is almost identical between the Excel and Visual Studio environments. I'm going to do one thing before I actually publish this to a server. I'm going to add one measure. So this will be our first measure and uh, what I'm going to do is is use a a little auto sum feature to add a uh, a measure called sales amount. We'll get into this in more detail later but um, I'm going to give this measure a easier name than that and I'll just call it sales. And that's all it really takes to create a, a named measure within uh, within this uh, design environment. Now, one thing before I deploy this that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to test and look at it. And I am going to point something out to you that's really interesting. So currently, I'm everything I'm doing is local on my own developer workstation. And if I want to browse this cube, if you remember in uh, previous versions of bids to browse a cube, we, uh, we had a browse function that would launch and it was a, a cube browser which was very nice but didn't look at all like what end users actually use. So the good news from that point of view is that now in your development environment when you're going to browse your model to see what it's going to look like to the end users, you actually are going to be using an end user tool and you'll be using Excel. As you can see, this is uh, just a regular cube browsing um, scenario. I can choose my my channel and, and do everything I need to do and check to make sure that this is okay. Now, one thing I really want to point out to you here is that 
I, I'm running my development environment has a local instance of analysis services uh, for tabular and this connection is actually to my local workstation model so if I look at the definition it's it's not on a database server it's actually on uh, my local uh, my local environment and this machine name is labwin7 and there's some random database name that's been created okay that's kind of important because when you are working in this development environment unlike in previous versions you can see all the data is right here in front of you in bids with the SQL 2008 R2 and prior you didn't see data here generally you, you weren't really working with live data now you are so there's just some differences that you have to take into account the biggest thing probably to, to, to think about is if you're using a local instance like I am you really can't you know be developing a cube with your full data set so you have to plan how you're gonna how you're gonna cut that down but in any case uh, once we're happy with this design and we are for now we have to tell it where we actually want it to go and I'm gonna deploy this to lab sequel one again the database name is fine and uh, I don't don't need to make other changes I'll just save that so now I'll right click and deploy that now the default is when we deploy a, a database is to go ahead and process it I left that setting intact so um, it will deploy the metadata that was very quick and then the next thing it's going to do is is process and while that's happening we'll just explain that that what's happening is over on the server the database has been created and the server is now running queries against the source data so the, the, my spreadsheet once I've created the project the Excel workbook is its history it's it's not paid attention to anymore now we're actually reading data directly from the data warehouse into the model that's deployed on the remote lab SQL 1 okay so our deploying process is completed uh, we can see our 3.4 million rows is loaded if I wanted to test that I could do that by uh, creating I'll just start from scratch here so I'll create a new Excel sheet and go to my data from other sources I'll say analysis services this is just a, probably one of the easiest ways to test and then there's that Contosa 1 database uh, my cube is there or my model is there and I'll click finish and I can do the same kind of querying that I would you know locally just to make sure that everything is working and so what we've actually done is in the development environment and I, what I've done I have connections to both of these uh, certain uh, both of these machines at this point but on the on the development environment I have uh, if I refresh I have a database called Contosa 1 and then my my username Rob and then some GUID that was put in here um, and that's my development copy and you know I could develop my uh, my entire model and, and use the remote server as um, as the development environment however uh, for performance reasons I kind of choose to do it this way I think most people probably will do that when I deployed it though I actually have deployed it to a remote server so I can see that it's sitting out here on the remote remote server so that's uh, taking an existing Excel workbook and promoting that into a server based solution and then we'll in future lessons take that further and enhance that solution and do a lot of more interesting things with it